Hello, my name is Ruth, and my life story is written in the Old Testament of the Bible. It's in a book called, well, Ruth. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. That's me. Can you say those again with me? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Look at that. You know, eight books of the Bible, of the Old Testament. Good for you. I'm impressed. You're pretty smart. You must have really good Bible teachers. I would like to tell you my story today in my own words, and you can follow along by opening your Bible to the book of Ruth and reading the story there. But first, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are amazing. You created the universe and all of us who dwell in it. We thank you, Father, for putting so many wonderful, kind, beautiful people in our lives. We thank you mostly, Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to earth to redeem us from our sins and make us part of your family. In his name we pray. Amen. My story is a story of love, loyalty, redeeming, and of motherly love. That special bond that between a mother and her child. Think about your mom and how special that relationship is to you. Your mother may have given birth to you. Your mother may have adopted you when you were a baby. Your mother may be someone who just chose to take care of you and to do all the things that a mother does by choice. Naomi was that kind of person to me. She became my mother when I married her son. She became my mother-in-law, but she became the mother of my heart as well. And that's our story that I'm going to tell you. Famine was in the land of Israel where Naomi, her husband Elimelech, her children, Kilion and Malon lived. A famine meant that no food would grow in the land. And so they decided to move temporarily to the land of Moab, my country. I met Malon and we fell in love and got married. I loved him very much. His brother Kilion also married a woman from Moab named Orpah. We were a very happy family for a while, a few years. There were six of us and we were so happy. But then sad things happen. Life is hard sometimes. Elimelech died. We were all very sad. And then it got worse. Malon and Kilion both died. So now our family was just three. Myself, Naomi, and Orpah. In Bible times, a woman has a really hard life if she does not have a husband because women are not allowed to own property, to own their own house. They're not allowed to have a job and they don't have any money in the bank. So being a widow is very hard in Bible times. I was doubly sad. Not long after our husbands died, Naomi got messages from her family back home in Israel that the famine was over. Well, Naomi was very excited to go back to her old home and to all of her friends. And so we decided to go with her, Orpah and I. Naomi was happy to have us to travel with her. With her. It was going to be a very long journey. So we started out on our journey. After we had gone a little way, though, still in Moab, Naomi stopped and said, my girls, you are so beautiful and still so young. Stay here in Moab. Go back to the family's home, your father and your mother and your brothers and sisters. Meet a nice Moabite man and get married and start a new life. I am an old woman and I have nothing left to give you. Orpah felt like that was probably true. And so she said a sad goodbye and turned around and went back to her parents' home to start a new life, but not me. I loved Naomi, and I did not want to part with her. I wanted to live with her and learn to be like her. She was so kind and the most wonderful and generous person I had ever met. I wanted to learn to live like her. 
So I said to her, don't urge me to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. You may have heard those words before. They've become very famous. People use those words a lot of times to tell how much they love another person and how they want to be together forever. Oftentimes, when a man and woman get married, they say those same words. That's how much I loved Naomi. I wanted to share my life with her. She was my family. When we reached Bethlehem, people were so happy to see Naomi. They were very sad to hear about the deaths of the men but they were very kind to me because I was Naomi's family. Because Naomi had not lived there for many years, and because she was a woman, her property was no longer hers. It had been sold to someone else. Someone else was living in her home and living in her farm. It was harvest time, time for the grain to be harvested from the field to get us all through the winter, but we didn't have a farm to harvest from. So I told Naomi, that I would go out into the fields of other farms and glean. Gleaning is when you go behind the field workers as they gather the grain and whatever they drop or spill, you pick up and take a basket and you fill that basket up with whatever little bits of grain is left over. And if you work really hard all day long, you can get a lot of grain that way. So that's what I did. Look at all of this barley that I collected. Barley is a great grain and it keeps well all winter long. So we were going to have plenty of food. Naomi had told me to go to the fields of Boaz. He was a relative of hers and he was very rich and he was very kind. Well, he saw me in the fields and he knew of the kindness of Naomi and how much I had loved Naomi and stayed with Naomi. And he thought that was very kind. And so he told his workers to make sure they left plenty of extra grain for me. I didn't know that. And what I also didn't know was that the God of the Israelites had taught his people not only to spill a little bit, but to actually on purpose leave grain behind for the poor people and for the widows so that they would always be able to find food. Isn't that kind? Isn't that sweet how God had always provided for his people and still does? He does. Well, Boaz was also our family redeemer, kinsman redeemer. That means that because he was part of our family, he bought our farm back for Naomi and he purchased the farm for her and purchased the home so we would have a home to live in and a place to be. So we had food and a home and eventually Boaz and I got married. We had a little baby, a son named Obed and he eventually became the grandfather of King David of Israel. And as you know, King David was one of the ancestors of Jesus's earthly family. So because of the motherly love and kindness that Naomi showed me, many people were blessed for many, many generations. And because of Boaz's kindness and his redeeming us, we were able to have a home and a family. Well, you know, today, Jesus is our Redeemer. He gave his life so that we would be part of God's family and free from sin. We have a Redeemer, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. This Sunday, May 10th, is Mother's Day. It's going to be a little different this year with us on quarantine restrictions. You can't take mom out to a restaurant to eat shouldn't be able to go to the stores to buy her a present or card. So we've come up with an idea. Someone from our children's ministry will be bringing a jar like this filled with muffin mix for you and your family. This muffin mix is made with grains 
like Ruth picked, flour, which comes from wheat, and oats, which is a, a grain kind of like the barley that Ruth picked or gleaned. This muffin mix will come with instructions on how to mix it up and bake it in the oven and turn it into muffins, chocolate chip muffins. You'll need your dad or another adult to help you. But I want you to use this mix and make muffins for mom for Mother's Day. Also, between now and Mother's Day, I want you to get out some paper and your markers or crayons or colored pencils, whatever you like, and make a nice card for your mother. Draw her a picture, maybe write her a poem, write a Bible verse in there. Whatever it is, tell your mother how much you love her and how much you appreciate her. And on Sunday, you can make muffins for mom and have breakfast with your family and celebrate Mother's Day. Let's always try to remember to celebrate the wonderful people that God has brought into our lives. We're so thankful that God is our Father and Jesus is our Savior and our Redeemer. Goodbye. I'll see you soon.